I'm joined now by Hugh Dugan from New York City. He's a visiting scholar on UN studies at Seton Hall University. Um, sir, welcome to our show. Good evening. Good evening to you. What did you make of Tillerson's remarks saying that the U.S. has established or has rather preferred direct communications with the DPRK? I felt quite reassured by that revelation. Um, I was a bit surprised that he said it, but obviously it's the right thing to say. He's our Secretary of State and knows what tensions exist and what might be useful for the public and other leaders to know that there is no blackout of communications. That's, that's extremely important. We must always have diplomacy on the table. And in fact, diplomacy is the table. So we see it's, it's active and I'm encouraged. At the same time this week, I understand that North Koreans were actually seeking out Republican affiliated people in Washington to help them understand the Trump administration and some of the signals that may be coming from the United States toward them. So I take a, a lot of confidence in knowing that there are means of communicating, perhaps not official, but back channel of different sorts that we've seen work in similar situations in different theaters over time. Uh, can you elaborate on what you just said, that the, the DPRK, the North Koreans, are trying to understand more about how Washington and the Republican administration works? Well, I saw a couple of quick reports this week in the media that indicated that there is outreach from the North Korean regime. Now, they may be acting through operatives and intermediaries, of course, but there does seem to be an interest and a willingness to understand not just U.S. policy, but also to help them interpret some of the messaging that's coming out of Washington so that there's more understanding and, and uh, cooperation ultimately toward resolving these tensions. You did lots of research and studies on the United Nations, and uh, DPRK has an ambassador to New York, to the United Nations. Uh, how was the interaction over there between the American official, uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley, and the North Korean, the DPRK official there, uh, going? Well, actually, we do not have formal diplomatic relations with uh, North Korea. The U.S. and North Korea do not exchange ambassadors. Uh, they do sit in the same chamber at the United Nations in a multilateral setting and uh, abide by the rules of the chamber and are courteous, of course, to everybody there and pay attention when everybody speaks and takes note. Uh, uh, the uh, North Korean mission made its statement in the General Assembly general debate last Saturday, which, uh, of course, drew media attention. And there was a uh, of course, uh, the audience paid close attention as it paid close attention to all the speakers. Right. We saw the DPRK officials taking notes when the Chinese foreign minister, as well as President Donald Trump of the U.S., uh, speaking. Well, Tillerson, let's go back to the Beijing meeting. Uh, Tillerson met with the Chinese president. He's going there, obviously, as a senior advance guard, if you will, for President Trump's uh, meeting with President Xi in Beijing in November. Um, some say President Trump's honeymoon period with President Xi is over. Uh, and that the White House is uh, considering a comprehensive new China policy. Uh, what are your thoughts on those uh, reports? Well, when President Xi came to the United States in April, uh, we called it xi diplomacy, And I think when President Trump goes toward Beijing, we can call it trump diplomacy. I think the fact is they seem to make a good relations in um, Florida. They met again in Hamburg at the G20. They've talked on the phone at least three times. So I think that this is a useful representation of the fact this is the 45th anniversary of the two countries normalizing relationships. And we see what President Xi has referred to as a new type of great power relationship developing.